Hello and welcome to Scully Unclassified. I'm Scully. I've been a software developer and architect for more than 20 years, and I created this channel to build your skills as an embedded software engineer with a focus on aerospace. Today's topic, GNC. GNC are the algorithms that fly your spaceship, or your boat, or your airplane, or your satellite. GNC stands for G, Guidance, and Navigation, and C, Control. There are some people who say that it should be NGC, where navigation is done first before guidance, but GNC is the common acronym. Launching a spaceship is like balancing a small building on top of a continuing explosion. That's controlled by vectoring or pointing the thrust coming out of the tail of the rocket. The algorithms responsible for calculating how much to vector that thrust or where to point that plume is GNC. The steps for GNC are first navigation. Navigation, where am I? What direction am I pointing in? Then you go on to guidance, where do I want to go? What's my pointing vector? What changes in acceleration do I need? And finally, you'll do control. So control will take that pointing vector and decide what commands need to go to the actuators or effectors on the spaceship itself. So that's what'll actually move that plume so that you can balance your rocket ship as you move through your ascent. After you're in orbit and you're no longer burning your rocket motor, you'll still use NG and C. Say you want to point your spacecraft toward a space station. Navigation will still figure out where you are and what direction you're pointing in. Guidance then would figure out the pointing direction to the space station. And then control would activate an ACS or attitude control system. There are valves that are distributed around the side of the vehicle. And as they open, they'll import a force that will rotate the vehicle in all three axes. Some reaction control systems, like what they used in the Apollo missions, will not only be able to rotate the vehicle, but also give lateral motion, front, back, left, and right. The heart of your navigation system is an IMU, or inertial measurement unit. It has gyroscopes and accelerometers so it can sense movement if you know exactly where you start and what orientation you're in, and you can sense the movement from that position, you can get a new estimate of what your new actual position is. And I say estimate because nothing's perfect. Those readings off the IMU won't be exactly right. And as time goes on, you'll build up error. What you'll see used in a lot of navigation systems is ways to buy down that error. So for example, you could have a navigation system that uses an IMU and also a GPS device. So the GPS device will take a reading of its position. It'll get a GPS position. It'll have its estimated position that it calculated from its initial position and its sense movement. And the GPS will buy down that error so you get a more accurate navigation solution. There are other approaches too, listening from a signal from the ground. You can take a star sighting to see what your orientation should be. And a lot of other different methods to reduce that error within the navigation system. An important algorithm is a Kalman filter. So as you're reading from an IMU, you could get noise on the line, or especially as you're thrusting, you'll get a lot of vibration. What a Kalman filter allows you to do is take in a noisy input signal and output a smooth, accurate estimate of what's actually being sensed. So when you come out of the Kalman filter, it'll be more accurate than any single measuring you might make. In general, the way that algorithm works is it creates keeps a current state of the vehicle and makes a prediction. It takes in the next reading from the IMU or a different device, and then it tunes its prediction based on the difference between the reading and the prediction. So now you've completed nav, you know where you are. You've completed guidance, you know where you want to go, where you're going to point to, and changes in acceleration that need to be made. And now you execute control. So control is going to take that command from guidance and it's going to run an autopilot to figure out if you're running thrust vector control, how do you move the bell on the bottom of the rocket? Or if you have a attitude control system, what valves need to open to be able to get you to the right pointing vector? The other top of control is at a lower level where you're closing the loop around the controller itself. So if you're just opening up a valve, that could be a open loop control. We're just sending a current, uh, it opens up a valve and gives out force as fuel exits from the valve. 
You could also have closed loop control. And this might be something like an actuator on a thrust vector control. You have an actuator that'll move in and out and say move the bell for pitch. You might have a second actuator might move it in yaw. That'll have a closed loop control system. And you see a diagram here. It'll take in the signal of where you want the control to be. And you'll see feedback of what the current position of the thing you're moving is. Then you'll take the difference between where you want it to be and where it currently is, and that'll drive a current into the controller itself. If you're working on designing these algorithms or architecting the software that implements them, I'd recommend you pay a lot of attention on the interfaces between them. Is the format and the information coming out of navigation, the input that guidance is looking for, and is it the input that your control or autopilot's looking for? Do you need a separate plant model that'll give you an estimate of the current state of the vehicle? So the plant model is just a mathematical model of the vehicle itself. Uh, it uses the word plant, which you might have heard in the 19th century. So not just a factory, uh, plant be meaning anything that's a machine. So if your plant model would tell you things like you've been burning your solid rocket motor for two minutes. So your mass should be this amount. So as your spaceship's taking off many times a second, it'll collect readings from the IMU, or inertial measurement system. It'll take those readings of movement, use those to estimate the new current position and orientation. It'll run guidance to figure out where it should be pointing and what acceleration changes might need to happen. Then it'll run control which will calculate how to move that bell, how to move that continuing explosion so that your small building of your rocket ship stayed balanced upon it. Hope you find this content useful. Uh, thanks for listening.